Mic check one two, it's the Y2K Collector coming at you with the morning brew. And can you believe that $50 million worth of fake retro games have been seized by the police over in Italy? I came across this article this morning and it was actually mind boggling when you start to think about um, what's been happening when it comes to the pirating of retro games and how many fake video games there are in circulation. Um, if you've picked up a lot of retro games in the last year or so, definite, and you've picked them, up, picked them up online, I would definitely uh, pull out your screwdriver and double check to make sure that they're legit. But check this out. The article says Italian police have dismantled a retro game counterfeiting ring, seizing fake consoles and pirated games with an estimated combined worth of over $50 million. While details on the matter are limited the seized goods reportedly infringed on nintendo sega and atari's intellectual property according to a 2023 study conducted by the video game history foundation only 13 percent of games published before 2020 are 2010 are currently available for purchase through legitimate means i'm going to read that again only 13 percent of games published before 2010 are available for purchase through legitimate means. Now, I don't know if legitimate means, if they're, you know, qualifying that as like retail stores or what. I don't know if like eBay counts as a legitimate mean. I don't know if Mercari, I don't know how they're, where they're coming up with that number, but still 13%, that's, that's rough. It says the older a given title is, the less likely it is still, it is to still be re retailing in any shape or form. Um, this state of affairs gave rise to the popularity of all-in-one retro consoles, which are essentially emulators that, com that come bundled with numerous classic games with few exceptions. These products are typically never properly licensed and therefore considered bootleg materials. That's crazy. It says, um, Turn Police sees 12,000 consoles containing 47 million pirated games. Wow. One Italian operation seizing, uh, sorry, geez, Louise, it's early, sorry. One Italian operation specializing in the trafficking of such products has been dismantled by Turin authorities in mid-September of 2024. AFP news agency reports via France 24, Alessandro Langea and Turin financial police office official uh, heading its economic crime unit said that the action resulted in the authorities seizing approximately 12,000 consoles that stored over 47 million pirated video games. The confiscated products have all been imported from China for the purpose of being sold via online retailers and specialized retro game stores, the official said, adding that this helped in tracking them. Whoa. Uh, while Angea estimated that the combined value of the seized materials is in the ballpark of 47.5 million or 52 million US, the official did not provide a breakdown of how Turns Financial Police arrived at this figure. Based on the cited numbers, the recently seized batch of con batch consisted of devices that stored around 4,000 pirated titles on average. For reference, many all-in-one retro consoles that can currently be purchased stateside are priced in the sub $100 range, including those that come with tens of thousands of games pre-installed. This would suggest that this batch of 12,000 consoles may not have generated more than a low seven digit sum in revenue were the traffickers able to sell it, even if the total value of the licensed games that it contained was theoretically much higher. All of the seized hardware has already been destroyed and it just kind of goes on um, from there. So this is this is something that's very interesting. Um, when I got up and I saw this article, I was I was honestly a bit shocked because of the fact that, you know, I see so many people talk about so many of these emulation devices and how, you know, they're awesome. And don't get me wrong, um, sometimes emulating can be better than trying to, um, you know, uh, go out and purchase all of these games. But it just goes to show you how serious um, law enforcement is cracking down on, on um, you know, these emulation consoles and these emulators, because at the end of the day, it is stealing. You know, it really is stealing. And like the article says, I'm not sure if the $52 million that they were referring to um, is the value of the actual games. 
um, that are being emulated or if the $52 million represents what was actually seized by the authorities. So that part is a little bit confusing, but this just kind of tells me a, a few things. One, um, if you have an, a retro operation that's that large, um, that tells me that the demand for retro video games is still huge, huge. Now, $52 million is nothing in comparison to the billion dollar gaming industry as a whole, right? You've got, you know, the, the modern gaming industry is huge, but still $52 million in just consoles is still substantial, a substantial amount. And it represents a substantial uh, part of the gaming community that still really has a desire for these games, these systems, and they still want to be able to um, play these games. And so... The, the other piece of the article that kind of really grabs me is the fact that there are th only 13% of the games made before 2020 are available via legitimate. Now, legitimate is is the tricky word there, because like I said earlier, you know, I don't know if they're counting eBay sales as legitimate or Mercari sales as legitimate. They could just be referring to actual retail stores. So, you know, big box stores like Walmart, Target, GameStop, Best Buy, they might be referring to that. And to be quite honest with you, I don't even know if any of those big box retail stores carry anything from, I mean, 13% 13, 13 would actually be a lot of items if, they're, if they are referring to those retailers. Because let's be honest, if you go into most retailers today, they barely have seventh and eighth gen stuff, right? If you go to Target, they barely have Switch games. They barely have PS4 games. They might have some PS5 games. So to think that those those types of stores still carry games from older than 2010 is a real long shot. That would have to be something that got lost in the stock room somewhere. And even if someone in the stock room were to find it, those SKUs probably might not even come up in the register. So um, now that's that's me speaking from what I see here in North America. It doesn't mean that a target in South America, a target in Germany, if they have targets out there, I'm not even sure, um, or if some major retailer across the globe, um, they might carry that, right? Whatever the version of target is in, I don't know, in you know some part of Europe or some part of Asia, they may actually carry, still carry something from prior to 2010. You never know. You might be able to go into a big box retail store and buy sealed, complete sealed PlayStation 2 games or Game Boy Advance games, who knows? All that being said, um, I think this is a very, we're, we're coming upon a very pivotal point in gaming history where I think physical is gonna be even, it's get physical is becoming more and more important, especially when you think about the PlayStation 5 Pro and the fact that they've announced that, you know, the system is gonna be basically digital and then you have to add on a disc drive if you do want to play any of your physical games. As we move further and further into a digital era, we're going to start to see how the values of these physical games um, continue to increase. And we're gonna see how emulation becomes even more important as the prices of those physical games continue to increase because people who want to play them, and there are people who do wanna play them, they're not going to be able to afford uh, those items and they're not gonna to wanna to pay those prices. So I think this is all very interesting. Um, let me know if you've read this article. Let me know what your thoughts are on this. I thought this is just very, very interesting. Like I said, it's the Y2K uh, collector coming at you with the early morning brew. Um, I'm going to be doing some of these types of videos in the morning where I kind of pull an article that captures my attention and I share them with the Y2K crew. Uh, I'm not sure if, I, if it'll be a Mondays only thing, if it'll be a daily thing, but I typically get up and try to read up on what's happening in the gaming community and I think some of these articles are worth sharing with the with the community. So let me know what you think about this down below in the comments and I'll catch you in the next video. It's the Y2K Collector. Take it easy.